the bottom, from the bottom, bottom. from the bottom, bottom. You know we got up, we got it, got it, got up. We 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 from the bottom. So once again, we back. You know, another podcast to support. You know, we got Mike D in the house up here in yeah. Seattle from what you from you from Michigan, right? Yep, originally from Michigan. I've been out here. Uh I was ra- I was grew up in Michigan, raised in Hawaii though. Oh I've been, I've been out here in Washington since 2003. Shoot. Did, did you I, wanna I met my whole adult years in Hawaii in, in Washington? Oh snap. That's what's up right there. Damn. Yeah. Man, shoot. Did did you want to leave Hawaii? Um, at first I didn't. Hawaii was like, Hawaii was everything, especially being a teenager in Hawaii, 16 years old through 20, 21, being, being there during that time was amazing. But, you know, once you get older, you start to miss being able to just get up and go at any time. You know, Hawaii's just isolated from the rest of the States, you know, and out there we call this, we call the main continental United States. We call it the mainland. So being able to, you know what I'm saying, just get up and access the mainland at any time was kind of rough. So it's it's easier being here in the States to just go wherever you want. You know what I'm saying? Get on the road and travel. You want to go on a road trip, boom, you can do that. You can't really do that in Hawaii. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know? What about you that get... weather, though? Oh, the weather was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I'm a December baby, so waking up to 80 degrees on my birthday is something that can't be matched anywhere else, you know? <laughs> Guess what's up? All right, so you know we got uh, you know, all right, Mike. Do you want to tell everybody like who you are and about your podcast? Yeah, I go by Mike D. Um, uh, I have a co-host named Tasha Rose. We have a, a a podcast called "What in the Relational Fuck." It's basically uh the 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 craziness that people experience uh through dating, love, relationships, sex, all of that. We talk about our personal experiences, our dating lives. You know what I'm saying? What she's going through, what I'm going through, everything while being single and, you know, getting interacting with with the, our listeners. They're telling us their stories. We're finding stuff on the Internet that's crazy that we that catch our eyes. So it's, it's really just about the, the downside and the craziness of of dating and so, uh, climate. So on your show, you get the best of both worlds, like you get the latest side point of view exactly. and the men's side point of view. Exactly. And Tasha. The dope thing about Tasha is Tasha, she's younger. Me and her are like nine years apart. You know, what she's more of, she's more in tune with today's times in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Like we have different mindsets because of our age gap, but we see things similarly. She's also a businesswoman. So she has a different outlook on what, on dating as well. So it's, it's dope to have two different perspectives. Shoot, that's a, that's a all right there. So, so how did you and your co-host link up? Um, me and Tasha actually met in 2000, and I think it was like, like 14 or 15 through a mutual friend, and then we reconnected again through a Facebook group. And um, I was going through like a real hard time in 2017, and she hooked me up with a job somewhere and became my boss. And we just became we we've been cool ever since. We've been tight ever since. And um. I had actually thought of the idea to do a podcast uh, with this concept with somebody a couple years back, but that person just like disappeared and whatnot. And um, I reached out to Tasha, me and Tasha just started going back and forth about the idea. And we sat down for lunch one day down on Alki and was like, you know what, let's do it. And we had an engineer that reached out to us that wanted to work with us. He was like, yo, let me produce your podcast. And, you know, did a couple test runs and got it up and running. See, that's what's up right there. That's what's up. So, so like, did were you listening to like different podcasters back before you started yours that made you want to start yours? Um, I had always been into uh, like so when I was in Hawaii, I worked in radio. I worked for um, I was an intern slash co-host at a hip hop uh, on a hip hop show in Hawaii during the late nineties, early two thousands. You know what I'm saying? And um, I've always been into that entertainment thing you know what i'm saying so but over the years as i you know started be knowing people around seattle and people started being on my facebook and i would just talk about the most random outlandish stuff on my facebook 
and everybody was like, yo, you need to, you need to have some kind of show or something. Your Facebook is always lit. And then um, I started listening to the Joe Button podcast. I'm a huge fan of Joe Button. Yeah. I've been a Button since the beginning of his career. And to see him do start doing a podcast thing, I was like, yo, this is, this is dope. Like, I can do something like this. I could do something like this. And I made an attempt in like maybe 2015 or 16, and it didn't go so well. Like the people that I was working with, we just, it just didn't mesh well. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I decided to step back, get back into music, and everything happened when it was supposed to and came into, you know, came to fruition, you know, a couple years later, five years later or so. And here we are, man. And I'm, I love it. I love the podcast world. And congrats, shoot. I mean, you following you following Joe Budden, you'll see how much of a business having a podcast is. Exactly. Like, his stuff big time now. You know, I, I compare him up there with like the Joe Rogan and stuff, you know, or the hip hop world. And the dope thing about it is that I watched it go from just being on SoundCloud, you know what I'm saying, for the early before he even before it was just the Joe Budden podcast. It was I'll name this podcast later, you know what I'm saying? And then he started <laughs> Like I, I've listened to every episode from like five up until like, like every week for, for probably like the first year or so, first year and a half or so, you know? And it was just like, yo, I can do this. This is, it just, I was drawn to it. I was just like a magnet, you know what I'm saying? Like this, this is something that I love. I love entertaining people. I love just being able to be in a position where I can be myself and not have to worry about what anybody else thinks because I know there's going to be other people that have the same mindset and the same thoughts as me or the same personality as me. So that's my favorite thing about doing all of this. Shoot, that's what's up right there. Shoot, cool. can you tell the people about your podcast? Like what to expect from your podcast? Um, To be totally honest, you're going to expect a lot of, uh, a lot of laughs, a lot of laughs. You know, one thing that people have said about me and Tasha's podcast is that, uh, our chemistry is incredible for this is her first time ever diving into anything like this. Oh, so she is, she's a natural. That's the dope thing about it. It's like, she's the natural, her personality's fire. She has the voice. She's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? She's, she incorporates a lot of things that most people wouldn't know. Like she brings, she gets to bring her personality and shininess. You know, she's really the star. I, I bring a lot of, <laughs> I, I bring a lot of stuff, but, when people talk about the podcast, they talk about Tasha. Like, oh, I just love Tasha. I just, I'm like, yo, I'm here too. Like, <laughs> like you know? but nah, like Tasha, Tasha's a star. And, you know, you, you can expect a, a lot of laughs, um, a lot of different perspectives on love and, and relationships, marriage, dating, sex, all of that, you know. Um, and it's a lot of transparency. That's the big thing for me is just, is transparency and being able to, just be unapologetically us oh, and that's that, that's really a big thing for me is just being you and and letting the world see who you are that's what's up so y'all doing the rebranding right now right yeah like initially it was called it goes down northwest that was the name of the podcast you know and when i was speaking or i was we we did a um a group thing and we were listening to this lady speak on podcasts and she spoke on when you want to catch your, if you want, you have an audience, you have to be known for one thing. You know what I'm saying? What are you guys known for? And your name has to represent that, what you guys are going to be known for. And we were sitting there just like all together. Everybody's on at home and we're, we're typing in a little, in a little comments or whatever. I was like, yo, that's, we really got to change this name because nobody, when you think about the name, it really didn't, you didn't know what you were getting. My, our engineer, one of our, the engineer that we're going to be working with now, he was like, yo, like the name actually sounds like, like it's going to be a bunch of drama and people fighting. And like, it goes down like fights in the Northwest or something like that. Like, hey, it right. sounds like, yeah, you hey, know, I didn't even think of it like that. So it's like, you know, what? we don't, we don't want it to be, oh snap. Okay. Hold on. Let me put this on the charger. My, uh, <laughs> yeah, my dang phone while to die. But, um, it's we, we decided to change the name. The name was actually Tasha's idea. The name was actually Tasha's idea, which was dope because it came like just like literally as like random. She thought of it and I was like, oh, that's actually really fire. Let's run with that. So, you know, we went ahead and, and, and ran with it. We got a lot of things that we're trying to um, that we're going to be working on together, you know, new uh, 
graphics, different ways to interact with the, with the listeners. I don't even want to call them fans, you know what I'm saying? Different ways to uh, interact with the listeners. Um, uh, going, doing live streams and having listeners, you know, come on in between our weekly, our bi-weekly recordings, um, doing merch and stuff now. You know, we, we got a lot of things that we're working on, a lot of things that we've been listening to the listeners and they, they've they been getting a lot of suggestions of what they would like to see more of coming up when we, uh, when we come back Feb- in February. Oh, okay, because I was going to ask, like, when are y'all going to be releasing the first episode? First episode uh, is on the GOAT's birthday, Michael Jordan's birthday, February 17th. <laughs> so uh, we're dropping on his birthday. Uh, that's a Wednesday, if I'm correct. So we're going to be recording every other Monday, dropping on every other Wednesday. But in between our recordings, we're going to be going live on StreamYard. Um going to go live and it's going to, you know, connect to our YouTube and the Facebook. So people are going to be able to uh, hop on. We're going to have um, <clears throat> things like, uh, like, what would you, what, what, or would you rather Wednesdays where, you know, we had to tell like people like choose what they rather do this or would they rather do that, but have it tie into relationships and stuff like that. So we, we're trying to put together a lot of things that, uh, that keep the fans or not the fans, but have the listeners really engage in more and make yeah. them want to come back each week. Oh, so you're going to be releasing a lot of content. So they, Absolutely. they don't even know y'all taking a week off in between because that's how much stuff y'all going to be releasing. Oh, yeah. Between shows. That's that's that that's the thing. You know, everybody that that I've spoke to that, that's been doing podcasts for a while, the main thing they, they, they've all said is content. You know, be consistent with your content. Always have something out there. So that's that's what that's our big goal right now. Oh man, shoot! I guess you got a point there. Shoot, that I mean, man, I'm proud. I can't lie. I'm, I'm happy to, you know, when uh when you reached out, I was happy to see another Seattle or another Seattle podcaster. <laughs> you know, yeah, you that, know that part. There's a few out here. There's quite a few. Um, one of the one of one of the people that really made me want to do it. I have a friend named Mike Mack, and he had a uh, Mac and Nelly. Yeah. Yep, Macinelli. Mike is like Mike. Mike Mac is like a younger brother to me. I've known him since he was like six. <clears throat> excuse me, sixteen or seventeen years old. So, <clears throat> and knowing how he is, knowing his personality, we have similar personalities. And um, seeing how him and Nelly went full speed, and and people really rocking with him. And I was like, yo, like I need to do this. Like I'm seeing my bro do this, seeing Nelly do this. This is it's inspiring to me to see people that I know, you know, stepping out and and cr- being creative in a different way. Cause Mike used to do music too. Then he's extremely talented, and Nelly does music too. So seeing both of them step out and and find another uh, lane to be creative in made me want to do that too. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, I, re- I remember. You know, I used to check around when I first started. You know, for other uh, podcasters up here, and I remember running into the Mac and Nelly show. Yeah, man. I think my co-host, <laughs> my co-host knew knew uh, Mac Mike too. Yeah. You know, yeah, Mike knows a lot of people, man. Mike knows, man, it's it's random because I've been seeing people that I wouldn't even expect him to know. They'd like pop up in his comments. I'm like, how the hell do you know? Like, what the? It's so <laughs> random. But no, nah, they, they they were they they were definitely inspiration for me to uh to to do the podcast as well. So who who would you compare your podcast to right now? Like, you know what? To be totally honest, I have no idea. I didn't even I didn't think about, you know, who who has similar content because I look at it like this with with any with any kind of product, whether it be entertainment or or or, or food, any, there's going to be a bunch of different brands of the same type. You know, you go down the grocery store, you're going to see 15 different brands of bread. Yeah. You know, but each different brand of bread, somebody's going to like that one for whatever that brand, you know, what I'm saying whatever, you know, what I'm saying Fran's milk and honey bread or, or potato bread. You know, yeah. or, or you're going to have Wonder Bread. Every, there's going to be a different thing for everybody. So I didn't even think to look into who, who might have similar content. I just, I just wanted to go out there and, and bring us to the, to the table. See, that's what's up right there. You know, I know I just met you, but I'm proud, you know, y'all even doing this. I appreciate that, man. I, I really appreciate it. And the crazy thing about it is like, because I, I work for BECU right now, Answer Phones. And over the past like year and a half, a lot of these old ladies be flirting with me on the phone, right? And they be like, you have such an amazing voice. 
you should do radio, you should do voiceovers. And I'm like, I've been hearing it so much. And I'm like, dog, oh, like, I need to do something with my personality and my and my voice. And why not do a podcast? You got that right. I mean, sky's the limit. You know, that's what I tell people. You never know unless you try. Exactly. You know, you and the only thing that you can get from failing is learning how what not to do the next time around. That's a fact. I don't know. I used you know, to want to be on. I used to want to be on. Uh, I don't even listen to the radio no more. But back, I used to want to be on Q ninety three. Yeah, one of my good friends. Uh, another inspiration for this, Eddie Francis. You know, Ooh, Eddie. I forgot about Eddie's him. Homie mine. Oh, it's been Eddie's been killing it, man. Eddie was down in L.A. working uh, with Dr. Dre on Pharmacy Radio and Apple Music. Uh, now he has his own show on Apple Music, and he's doing amazing down there with Apple. So shout out to my guy, Eddie. I forgot all about him. I ain't heard the name in so long. Yeah, he, he left and, and got down to L.A. and Dr. Dre and, and all of them snatched him up and brought him over there to Pharmacy Radio. Crazy thing about it is if you watch, um, there's a, 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 a documentary on Netflix, uh, Quincy Jones, and Dr. Dre's interviewing Quincy Jones. Eddie is right there interviewing Quincy Jones with Dr. Dre. Now I'm going to go check that out. I'm going to yeah. go check that out. They're walking around Quincy Jones' house looking at all of his records and, and awards and all of that. Yeah, I gotta check that out. Are you still into music right now? Um, not so much. I think, I, yeah, not really. To be totally honest, I'm. I really don't even listen to a lot of hip hop anymore. Yeah. To be totally honest, like, like nothing, <laughs> nothing really inspires me anymore. I'm a huge battle rap fan, so uh, that's been that's been my big thing for majority of the past twenty some years. Has been twenty twenty three years has been battle rap, but put out a couple projects. Uh, and I think after my last one in 2015, I did some shows throughout 2016 and 17, and I just stopped doing music and just started focusing on uh, parenting. You know what I'm saying? Like I put music to the side just to focus solely on on being a dad. See, that's what's up right there. This was, now this is off subject, but you yep. said you're a big battle rap fan. Absolutely, diehard battle rap fan. Is it a lot? Of, is it battle rappers up here in the oh the yeah Northwest? There's right. a lot. Actually, one of the best in the world is from Federal Way. Two of the best in the world are from Federal Way. I don't want to say one. Um, there's a dude named Jada Nightwing. He's a black Samoan cat. And he's actually battling on URL this Saturday at one of their biggest pay-per-view events. Um, oh. Yeah, and Stewie Newton, he was the first person from Washington to reach the Smack URL stage. So, Jada Nightwing. Oh, yeah. He's fire. Incredible. Incredible, but so they, have, they have they have quite a few leagues. They have uh, four MCs, by MCs uh, battle league down in Olympia, Alliance Battle League in Tacoma, um, uh, Sky Tier Northwest uh, in Seattle, and there's another one called Upper Left Shalon Battle League (ULB). Um, it's all you know between Seattle and, and Olympia, but the the battle rap scene out here is incredible. There's a lot of talent. Um, a lot of dope MCs. Like I said, two two of the biggest that to come out of Washington have reached one of the highest platforms, the highest platform in, in battle rap. So so wait, is it is it like what you see in like videos? Like it'd be like face to face yeah. crowd like going crazy like that up here? Yeah. Oh, I'm Absolutely. Really missing, I'm missing out. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, we'd have had like I was the first I was the first person in Washington to really Touch. No, I was the second person. So I'm not gonna say the first person. I was the second person in Washington, uh, in this written era battle rap to get on to one of the uh, biggest platforms, which is called Grind Time. There was a guy named H Bomb who's like a legend in Seattle. Uh, he was the first, and then I started. I kept it going after him, um, and then you know I kind of I kind of fell back from battling, and then Alliance Battle League picked up and started throwing crazy events, um, and then four MCs by MCs in Olympia. Then uh, they had a hat Washington, which ultimately became sky tier. Um, and yeah, the scene has been incredible. You know, we've lost some very important people to the culture, uh, to Northwest culture. So um, uh, the, the, one of the founders of Alliance battle league, uh, his name was safe. Um, uh, another, another MC named El Solo recently passed this year. And um, 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 
who else do we had an MC named Lucent who recently passed this year. And um oh can't forget my guy Mr. Slim was passed, he was killed by a Seattle PD uh New Year's of 2019 going into 2020 or 2018 going into 2019. So Rest in peace to all them dudes, man. They were very pivotal in uh, Northwest Battle Rap. Dang, R.I.P. I, I guess, you know, you learn something new every day. I'm sorry, y'all. But once he said, like, the battle rap, you know, I was like, I got to find out more. Hey, know? man, it's it's so much. It's so much. I actually actually co-host a battle rap online uh, live show as well called The you Breakdown Crew. Yeah. Like, you doing that right now? I mean, you still doing it, like... Today? Yeah, I'm a co-host on there. Uh, yeah, I'm a co-host on there. We do it every week. We just had a, uh, we just did a sh show on Monday. So every time uh, there's something going on in Battle Rap, we go live on Streamyard, on YouTube, and Facebook. Oh man, you're gonna have to send me that link. I got okay. you. I got you. I used okay. to co-host. Uh, I used to co. Actually, I had created one called uh, Debatable Battle Rap Radio in 2018, and I did that for about a good year and a half, almost two years. But things kind of just started to slow down and. I realized that um, it was it wasn't hard, but I just had to I couldn't find the right formula of of a team to yeah. keep it moving. So I just decided to excuse me put that on hold for a little bit. Hey, so I just never got you. back to it. I never got back to it honestly. You know, much respect to you. You know, <laughs> I, I got one you. question. I just gotta ask. It's funny that you said about battle rap because I was just talking to somebody about this the other night, and I was telling them that you know, battle rappers sit there and they freestyle on their opponent, like stuff out their head. And I forget, they told, somebody told me, they were like, no, nah, most of that stuff be written. Yeah, nowadays the battle rap culture has evolved, you know, with everything, with everything, there's always going to be a change, there's evolution. Battle rap went from the freestyle era for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like, they had events, major events. Uh, they even had one of the biggest events for a long time was happening in Seattle called Brainstorm. Huge freestyle battle event, 64 MCs. Whoever wins ends up getting $2,500 or $5,000. You Ooh. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was in that twice. Um, made it to the final 16 and didn't make it to the rest. But a lot of battle rap legends came out. But over time, it evolved. And it was kind of like going from, if we had compared to something, freestyle battling was kind of like street fighting. You know, and now it's more like a UFC type thing. You get to train for your opponent, study your opponent, you know, put together a strategy and a game plan to make your opponent's strengths, you know, make their make their weaknesses, your strengths and their strengths weakness. You know, it's you really get to sit down and craft something that could, you know, just change your entire outlook on who the, the person that you're standing in front of. And now it's gotten to the point where there's. 3,000 plus fans in these crowds. You know, they had an event in the Philippines where one of the most viewed battle rappers uh, from the States went out there and they had a sold out event at the same, uh, the in Manila, the same stadium that Muhammad Ali fought in and sold it out in the Philippines. A battle rap? Yes, battle rap is- It's bigger yeah. than I thought. Yeah, it really is. Battle rap is honestly like the last form of pure lyricism that's out there. Do do you feel? I'm so sorry, guys. I'm asking these questions. <laughs> Wait, do man. You, do you feel West Coast battle rappers get the same respect as East Coast battle rappers? Now they do. Now they do. There's there's um quite a few right now. The West Coast is like kind of running battle rap. To be totally honest, right mm -hmm. now the West Coast is really running battle rap. They said some of the biggest names are from the West Coast. Some of the big names are from the West Coast, are from Cali, Arizona. Um, let's see, we got LA, Arizona, Compton, uh, Federal Way, Portland. Um, yeah, Portland got battle rappers. Oh, yeah, one of the best in the world to do. Uh, his name is El Immaculate, one of the best in the world ever. I gotta do some research. I got, yeah, I got, I got a lot of work. I gotta check. There's on. so many, there's so many dope MCs on the West Coast. Like, I don't even want to just, like, name a few because there's, like, a lot. There's a lot of talent. And, you know, I was more, like, growing up in Michigan, I was literally, I grew up on West Coast music, but as I got older, I kind of gravitated more towards East Coast lyricism, you know what I'm saying? But being on this side, I got to see that there was really a lot of dope lyricists on the West Coast that I didn't, that I didn't really get to see growing up. So, 
I see that, you know what I'm saying, there's a lot of talent on the West Coast, man, especially in this battle rap culture. A lot of it. See, see, now, you the reason, like, one, one of the reasons I started my podcast, you know, because I tell people they don't have to be a celebrity to learn stuff. <laughs> and, like, you just you just schooled me on this battle rap, and I didn't even know Seattle had a battle rap scene. Man, I, when I first got here, uh, I got here, I remember the date. It was Friday, April 11, 2003. Yeah. And that following, that following Friday, the 18th, I found my first freestyle battle event out here. I was online looking up. I was heavily just like, all I wanted to do was rap, 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 rap. That's it. And after that, like, people started to hear my name around. And I started entering. There was another event that I entered. And nobody knew who I was. And I came in there. And people was like, yo, who the fuck? Who, who is this dude? <laughs> and I was out here just running through people. Just running through people, and I earned. I I never wanted to be famous with rapping. I just wanted to earn respect from those who were respected, Dang. you know. And and I did that. I did that. I earned. I earned respect from you know those who were considered the best out here. Especially at that time, there was so much dope talent out here, and I was like, yo, this is this is incredible. Seattle really molded me as a as a as an MC. So, see, that's dope, what I'm man. talking about. I was like, somebody out here got to put Seattle on the map. I mean, I guess. You oh, know, they, that, that's not even forget. There's like so much, so many dope MCs out of Tacoma too, man. You know, Seattle gets more praise, but there's so much talent in Tacoma. It's like, it's ridiculous the amount of talent that's out there too. It's, it's one of my favorite rappers in the entire Northwest is from Tacoma. Actually, two of my favorites. Um, uh, it goes by Cali Reed. And uh, King Leeds used to go by Leezy Soprano, two of my favorites, both incredible. See, incredible. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna have to do some research now. <laughs> Telling you, man, it's it's the music scene, battle rap scene, all of that stuff out here is fire. Ooh. All right, all right. Let me, you know, I can ask like a million, <laughs> I can ask a million questions, but you know, let me let me get back to your podcast. <laughs> uh -huh. Let me see. What what are your future goals with the with the podcast? You know, you and your co-host. What are y'all future goals? Um, ultimately, we want to start throwing events. You know, since it's a relationship based podcast, we're both single, so we both want to we want to throw events that are based around singles. You know, hopefully introduce some people to some people. Somebody can find love based off the podcast. Somebody can find a future husband or wife based off the podcast. Uh, want to do a live show that's based around a singles event as well you know uh we we uh we've been talking about doing like a speed dating thing um yeah. you know ultimately honestly i want to get into acting and movies i've always wanted to get into acting. Skits. uh both nice both <laughs> of them both of them man i want to do both so uh I can't. I really don't know what Tasha's ultimate goals are, but I, but I know as far as the podcast goes, we both have the same goals. We want to get to a point where people are tuning in weekly, people are paying attention. We want people all over the country to pay attention to what we're doing, you know, and to and to really gravitate towards what we bring to the table. Because, like I said, there's there's gonna be a thousand a thousand relationship podcasts, you know, but we definitely want to, you know, do what we do so we can stand out amongst that thousand. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. Okay, so I got a question. I want to see how you would answer it on your show. All right. <laughs> so you said you said you and your co-host are single, right? Yeah. Can guys really be friends with women without an ulterior motive? Because that's a big that's a big question. Every time somebody that posts is, something, that is a very big thing. Um. I think every guy ultimately wants to, if they, especially if they got an attractive friend, ultimately in the beginning, they want to hump on their, on that, uh, that, that friend. Yeah. Things don't work. And then they become like, Oh yeah, that's the homie. Like, no, we don't go like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, I don't look at it like that because they already passed that rejection phase. So now they're just like, it's permanent friend zone and they have no <laughs> choice but to deal with it. So I think, I think that uh, majority of the time, uh, men are going to want to smash their uh, attractive homegirls. Yeah, but I do have homegirls that I don't look at like that. I have some that I've never even thought about looking at like that, you know? So I, I, it's possible. It's definitely yeah. possible. <laughs> it is. Well, yeah. 
I had to ask that question, you know, get your take on it. Yeah, it's 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 absolutely possible. You know, so so where can people find you and your podcast? Uh, right now we are on uh, iTunes. We are on iTunes. We're on Spotify and on SoundCloud. So if you don't have Spotify and you have an Apple phone, you can go right to iTunes. If you don't have uh, iTunes, you can go to Spotify or SoundCloud. But would, would they look up, all of them. would they look up the new name or would they look up It Goes Down the um, West? Right now, they would probably look up. They would look up the "It Goes Down" NW podcast. Um, but starting on the seventeenth of February, actually, probably before that, probably before that, because we've already told our listeners that we were going to change the name. So we we're already in the process of getting. We already updated the Instagram, uh, the Twitter, uh, emails, all of that stuff. So uh, people are going to be able to. Uh, I mean, the Facebook, uh, the Facebook page and group and all of that. Um, Everything's already slowly getting updated and making all the necessary changes. So right now, yeah, it's it, right now it's going to be it goes down Northwest podcast. But give us about a month or so, and you'll be able to um to find it under the new name. Yeah, see, that's what's up right there. You know, I gotta I gotta give it to y'all once again. You know, I'm I'm proud of both of y'all. I don't even know y'all, but I'm just happy y'all even doing it. You know, it's it's dope because especially in the Northwest where. This, the the black community, we need more of this. You know what I'm saying? Like we need more black faces out there that are bringing their perspectives on pretty much everything, whatever it is. Bring your perspective because we need our voices heard. Well, yeah, you know, and it's it's good to be to be a part of that. It's, it's it's great to be a part of that, and that's why I was excited when I found out that you were out here too. I was like, "Yo, this is dope!" And I told Tasha, "I was like, yo, he's out here." You know what I'm saying? He's not far, so like this this is fire. <laughs> so I, I I love it, man. I, I love seeing you know what I'm saying everybody flourish and shine in 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 this industry. Well, my 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 whole thing is I I can't lie. Before you singing that post, I was going back and forth the like, should I even put this up? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> But then, you know, I, I realized that, you know, it, it's, it's really, I learned that a lot of podcasters take this stuff like real, per, like it's a competition, you know. Yeah, like, there's no reason to be a competition because we can all learn from each other. You know what I'm saying? One of the biggest things is, you know, like each one teach one. Yeah. You know, I learned from people that have been in here longer than me. There's things that people can learn from me because I've been in the entertainment side for a long time. I come from a family of entertainers. You know what I'm saying? Like on my dad's side, like so many people do music and have been in the music industry for a long time. Like my uncle wrote Ice Ice Baby, dog. Like I literally come from a very musical family. Wait, 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 pause it right there. Pause it right there, Mike. You just can't <laughs> let that, you just can't let that slide out and you just keep yes. going. <laughs> wait, yes. wait. Yo, like, your your uncle wrote yes. Ice yes, you know the Ice story. Baby. So you know the story about Suge Knight and Vanilla Ice, right? Where Suge right. Knight supposedly hung off the balcony. Well, Suge Knight supposedly hung him off the balcony because the artist that wrote a bunch of songs on that album wasn't getting paid. That artist is my Uncle Mario. Yep, if you look it up, Mario Johnson. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's wow. my uncle. Then I have a younger, I have a younger brother who was signed to um to Warner Brothers for a long time, had a huge, huge following. Go by the name XV. Um, then I have my cousin who was also signed to uh, Aftermath with Dr. Dre. Who was your cousin? He goes by the name Slim the Mobster. God, that, so you're right. Your family do run in the music yeah. circles. Yeah, this is this like, all this is, and this is this is my brother, first cousin and uncle. You know what I mean? So. This is this has been something that I kind of like, even though I didn't grow up with that side of my family until I didn't meet them until I was like 20. But like music and understanding of music and entertainment in the industry has always been my thing. You know what I'm saying? So this is this is my life. Like it's got to a point. My eight year old wants to rap. Well, I mean, it seems like it's in the, in the blood, in the bloodline. Yeah. So yeah, it is. Know, ain't no telling. It'd probably be the next child star out here. Right, man. He just recorded a song, like his great grandmother passed away in uh, December. And a couple of weeks ago, he sent me a, uh, on his iPad, sent me a little uh, a little file and it said, in the studio at home. And I was like, 
<laughs> and next thing you know, he's freestyling a song about how he felt about his great grandmother passing away. And I was just like, yo, this is dope. So I got like, what, where did he fire. record it? You still got recording stuff at your house or? Nah, he did it on his iPad. He figured out how to do it on his iPad. Oh, he owned the song. That's a yeah, smart guy. and I was just That's like, this guy. is crazy. He picked a beat that, the you gotta think, like I said, my son is eight, you know? He found a beat that kind of like fit the tone, fit the mood of how he was feeling and then rapped over it and had like little, he was like riding like the pockets of the beat and then like the, the beat dropped and he had like a little interlude or like a little like a little bridge. And then when the beat picked up, he went right back into it. I'm like, and he's freestyling this. He's, he, some of his words ain't connecting, but a lot of them that was there, it was, it was like, yo, this is kind of dope. See, man. Especially for him to be eight. Man, keep it up. Keep it up. You know, I'm proud of him too. Shoot, keep man, it up. Man, that's my guy. That's my guy. He already got his own little rap name too. He goes by Chirp Phenom. <laughs> oh, he ain't playing with Hey, Dad, you don't have to get the merch going, Dad Oh, absolutely All my friends on Facebook, when they see pictures They call him Chirp, they don't even call him Jordan They call him Chirp Oh, he already, oh, oh, it's coming Yeah, It's coming, it's gonna be like Man, I remember absolutely. his dad told me about him back in the day Yep <laughs> Yep, I'm telling you, man It's gonna be like Peter Guns and his son, Corey So, so okay So before, you know, we wrap it up I always ask the, um the person I'm interviewing to give an inspirational quote to uh, to our listeners. Do you, you got one? Um, I, I give this to my guy. I quote this from my guy, Jaykin, and this is something that always resonated with me. And he said it on a song that I heard back in like 2005. And the line said, it was about a father and son converse. And it said, from a prince to a king, to get a glimpse of a bird without wings is worthless. Serve your purpose. <laughs> I like that one right there. I like you know, that. and that's and that's something that's always resonated with me because a lot of times in life we don't we we question what we're meant to do. Yeah. You know, and we we we're a lot of times we're afraid to do what it is that we feel like we're called to do. You know, and the first thing to do is to take that first step. And that first step is usually the one thing that we're afraid of because we're afraid we might fall. Well, then plus you'd be you know? afraid of what people probably say about you. Exactly. But, you know what I'm saying? If you're meant to do whatever it is that you feel passionate about, ain't no way you can fail. There you go. This is, you know, smart words from a wise man. So Absolutely. everybody, this is Mike D. What in the rational, you know, I don't, I don't really cuss. You know. Relational, relational. Oh, relational. Sorry about that, Mike. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> You know, I let him say, you know, I don't really, I don't really cuss y'all. So y'all. He don't be cussing. So it's what in the relational fuck? Uh, in you Seattle. Know what I'm saying? Yes. Based out of Seattle. Shout out to uh, BOC Studios. It's officially a BOC production. My guy, Intellect, has uh, been my engineer for the past six years, six, six seven years. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so we're recording with him. Shout out to him and uh, everybody over at the BOC music uh, team who's supporting. Thank you to everybody. Uh, Cal, thank you for you for bring getting me up on here, man. Oh, I really man. appreciate it. Uh, shout out to my host, to my host Tasha. Shout out, and Tasha. Um, yeah, shout out to Reese. Got to give a shout out to Reese. He was the guy that uh, actually set us up with this and got us going. So, um, uh, got Everybody keeps calling me, but um, you know, shout out to everybody that's been listening and following us from day one. So I appreciate everybody and to everybody that's gonna tune in after this. Thank you. Well, yeah, you know, I'm going I'm to have to tune in, you know, make sure y'all go follow him on Instagram, you know, Facebook. Are you, you on Twitter? Yes, I am. Uh, my Twitter is first name Mike, first name M-I-C on Twitter. Oh, that's all it is. Wait, am I, that's it? Like at M-I-C? No, no. It's like the word first, the second word is name, and the last word is Mike. Oh. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm like, how you get that name? I got kicked off of Twitter, man. I had my Twitter since like 2008, and then I got kicked off of Twitter about three, four months ago. And uh, because I told somebody, shut up, nigga. And next thing you know, I got reported. But and I'm like, kicked, dog, like, they kicked you off like that? Yeah. I'm like, yo, there's all kinds of porn on Twitter, but I tell somebody, shut up, nigga, and I ain't got no Twitter page no more. There yeah. went like 4,000 followers right there. Oh, 
Well, I'm going to make I'll sure, you know, I go follow you on there so I can share your stuff. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. So, Mike, how, how do you, how are you going to be signing off on your show? Because that's how we're going to end this show is you doing your sign off for your show. We don't really got to sign off. We just talk crazy until it's time to go. <laughs> we're like, yo, we'll see, we'll see y'all next week or next episode. Thanks for tuning in. You know what I'm saying? Oh, real quick. Follow the Instagram. Um, is it? Yes. Yeah, w W I T R F podcast. Um, so you follow that on Instagram. Um, and from there, you can see me and Tasha's personal pages and you can follow us on our personal pages as well. See, shout out. Make sure y'all go follow, you know, and I got to say once again, thank you, Mike, for coming on. Bro, I appreciate you for having me, man. Thank oh, you. Man. I really do. Man, you know, it's all good. You know, it's all support. There's enough ears out here for everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I just, I just, you know, I just hope that, you know, somebody see what, you know, I was doing to trying to help other podcasts. And they be like, well, should, let me help somebody out too. Let me get them on my exactly. show. Exactly. I'm telling you, man, each one teach one. That's what it's really, that's what all of this is all about. There's enough room and enough ears for us to be, to be out here shining. Well, yeah, you got that right. So whenever that first episode come out, you know, from your rebrand, let me know so I can make sure I got share you. it all on my stuff. I got you. I got you, good fella. Uh, all right, Mike, I appreciate it. You know, we'll talk to y'all next time. And it's going to yes, be sir. podcast of the week. And make sure y'all go follow him and Tasha. All right. Thank y'all. Peace. <laughs> from the bottom. From the bottom. From the bottom. From the bottom.